This lesson deals with pole zero diagrams. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 9, starting on page 15. As we've shown in our last videos, the transforms of signals are ratios of polynomials in the complex variable s. We could just state a general ratio as f of s in the following way. Say it's a polynomial in s raised to the mth power in decreasing values of m, and the denominator with the highest power being n and the decreasing values of n. We'll put a coefficient in front of each one of these. Now if we pull out the leading coefficient of the highest power of s, pull it out and there's divided out of each term that's here, we'd have a 1 with s to the m, and likewise for the denominator we could pull out a sub n from each term, we'd have 1 times s to the n, and then a to the n minus 1 divided by n, and so on down the line. The term we just pull out, b sub m over a sub m, we call the scale factor, I'm just going to call it generically just the letter k. Now we're left with an mth order polynomial in numerator, and that would have m roots. Likewise, the denominator, being nth order, would have n roots. We can designate these as s minus z1 times s minus z2 all the way down to s minus z sub m, and then s minus p1 times s minus p2 all the way down to s minus p sub n. The roots of the denominator we call poles because when s is equal to p sub i, i is equal to 1 through n, the denominator is equal to 0, and the reciprocal becomes infinite. The term actually derives from a tent pole. You have this large projection sticking out with everything pulled back behind it. The roots of the numerator we call the zeros because when s is equal to z sub i and i is equal to 1 through m here, the numerator vanishes and the function becomes zero. Collectively, we call the poles and zeros the critical frequencies because at these values of s, very dramatic things happen to the function. It goes to zero or infinity. A pole zero diagram is a visualization of these critical frequencies in the complex s plane. We're going to use an x for a pole and an o for a zero. Let's do an example. Let's sketch the pole zero diagrams of these two functions, s plus 1 over s plus 2, and then 3 times s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 plus j2 times s plus 3 minus j2. We'll draw our s plane as having a real x-axis and an imaginary y-axis, and in our function f of a, the function goes to 0 when s is equal to minus 1, and the denominator goes to 0 when s is equal to minus 2. So f of a then is equal to 0 when s is equal to minus 1, and it's equal to infinity when s equals minus 2. This is just the algebra of this equation. So we'll show at z1 equal to minus 1, a 0, and at minus 2, a pole, and that would be our pole 0 diagram. For our second function, f of b, the numerator goes to 0 when s is equal to minus 2, put that right here as a 0. Now our denominator, this first term goes to 0 when we have the opposite sign here, in other words, minus 3 minus j2. You can sketch that. Here's the real part of minus 3, and then here's a minus j2. The second term in the denominator goes to 0 when we have s equals to minus 3 plus j2. So we could also sketch that. Here's minus 3 and then a j2. So this is a visualization of the poles and zeros of our ratio. The thing to note here, in the denominator we had a pair of roots that were the complex conjugate of each other. In other words, the same real part and then a plus and minus the imaginary part. Now if you multiply that out, something interesting happens. s times s, so I get s squared, and then I have 3 plus j2 times s, and then I have s times 3 minus j2, and then I've got 3 plus j2 times 3 minus j2. And I've shown this on the bottom of the page. Okay, so we have s squared, we have this term, and then we have the same term but with the opposite sign on j, so these cancel. I'm just left with 3 plus 3 times s, which would be 6s, and then I have this term here, which is going to be 3 times 3, which is 9. This term times this is the opposite of this term in sign, so they cancel, and then I have j squared, times 2 times 2, and a minus sign. So I have 9 then plus 4, which is 13. And thus we're left with real coefficients. And this happens in general because the j and the minus j terms cancel. MATLAB can find a Laplace transform of any function f of t. Let's see how we might do this. Let me make this a little bit larger, so it's a little bit easier to see. We'll start off declaring our symbolic variables, in this case t and s, and let's take the example we did on page 14 which was e to the minus 2t times u of t plus 4 times t u of t minus u of t. We'll call that f. So when you hit return, it echoes back the same expression. Just to see if we made a type mistake. Let's use the Laplace command in MATLAB. We'll say f is equal to Laplace of f, t, and s. So here's our function little f. Our variables here are t and s. And the order is very important. We're going to be taking the Laplace transform of f of t and giving us f of s. So when you hit return, you get the value, which is 1 over s plus 2 plus 4 over s squared minus 1 over s. 
Now you can have this clean this up a little bit by using the command called simplify. And so I'll take simplify over a function f and it gives us a common denominator. We've got two times s plus four divided by s plus two divided by s squared. Let me make that look a little bit fancier using the pretty command. And you get the following. So you get two times s plus four over s plus two times s squared. And these are some of the properties of pole zero diagrams and using MATLAB to find poles and zeros.